JJ the CPA here, self-employed PPP 2.0, the Paycheck Protection Program second round is going to come. I think I've always had I've always contended that there's going to be more PPP even if you got PPP1. There does seem to be in my mind some question around how will the self-employed qualify for PPP2. So if we look at what's been passed or presented throughout the summer related to PPP2, the second round of the Paycheck Protection Program, it includes a qualifier this go around. Will it ultimately have that? I think yes. The qualifiers will be based on size of the company, based on the number of employees. I think there'll be a much lower limit on it. All speculation here, October 18th. But you want to be prepared. So if you remember, if you were involved with PPP1, you were left out in the cold. Sole proprietors, self-employed, the single member LLC that files a Schedule C, the gig worker, okay, the ones that are receiving a 1099 and not filing a separate return. If you don't remember, I will remember for you, you were left out in the cold. You couldn't even apply for PPP until a week after. Once you were able to apply the last time, the money ran out the first roll within three days. So you want to be prepared. So without any actual, here's the bill, here are the requirements, here's what I am projecting for you, the self-employed for PPP 2.0 that you would want to have in hand. The first one, good news, is Schedule C for 2019 because here we are October 18th. That was due no later than October 15th. So you have it, okay? If you're self-employed for your 2019 return, make sure you have a copy of it. Make sure it's not a, a copy that only has numbers on it. It needs to be the actual form Schedule C. And it's really simple because it's going to say Schedule C at the top. Boom. Make sure you actually have it available to you and not something you have to request from a third party later. But more important than that, if there's going to be a qualifier I think the qualifier will be what we saw proposed in the HEALS Act that never actually got into a bill that was passed, but in the HEALS Act, it mirrored something related to a different tax credit that came out of the CARES Act, and all that is this. You will need to show that you were economically affected by COVID, in my opinion, to be able to qualify for PPP 2.0. So how is that going to be the case? Well, when we look at the HEALS Act and what was presented in the other credit, it is actually a comparison of your gross revenue to the prior year. So for a lot of self-employed, gig workers, sole proprietors, small business that isn't incorporated, or even if you have a single member LLC and you're filing a Schedule C, for many of you, because it's the beauty of what you are doing as a Schedule C filer for tax purposes. But for many of you, you don't necessarily have financial statements. Your bank is going to want to have something from you. It can't just be verbally. It can't just be a hen scratch out. What they're going to need from you is to show, based on what I'm anticipating, for you to show them what your gross revenue was. And at this point, month by month. The reason you want it month by month is that there's going to be a comparison of 2020 numbers to 2019 based on what we know October 18th. So the simplest way for you, if you're not keeping financials, in my opinion, is you're getting your bank statements available back to January 2019. Be sure you're hearing that. January 2019 all the monthly bank statements. Your banks don't have them online typically back more than three, four months, maybe six. They're not going to have these available to you with one phone call within the hour. Okay, Especially if when this comes about with PPP2, everybody else is asking for these. So get your bank statements and then go through the bank statements now. Do not wait even if you don't ultimately need this information, you will be better prepared for a lot of other reasons, especially as it relates to taxes. But go through and in January of 19, look at your bank statements and go, here was my income, Excel spreadsheet. 
January 2019, I know that that's my income. Not just what I deposited because money from loans, money that you put in, money from credit cards, that's not income, okay? It's income that you got from customers, from sales. And then you would want to know that for February and March all the way through September of 2020, okay? You don't have time, potentially, once we know what PPP 2.0 is and as fast as it may come out, to then go back and wait on a bank. I mean, I've had clients that for other purposes have had to request bank statements from their bank and they might have to wait a week, especially if they're actually needing the actual bank statement, not just the activity. It's going to take a little bit of time. So for January, no, the sales for February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, and December of 2019. I mentioned each one so you would really I want it to really drive home. You need to know what it is each month. Okay. And then January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September of 2020. What is your revenue for the month? Now, we know in the Heels Act, it, it, it indicated quarter by quarter. So first quarter compared to first quarter, 2020 to 2019, second quarter to second quarter. The Heels Act came before the end of the third quarter. So what we need to know is that it's a potential that there'll be a comparison of third quarter 2020 to third quarter 2019. So when we're looking at calendar quarters, January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, and September, right? Logically though, it may not actually make sense for the government to go by calendar quarter. In my state, there was a grant and it was based on a look back and comparison to three different time periods, all based on monthly averages. And none of them were based on the actual calendar normal quarter. There was a comparison that included March, April, and May. Okay, It was three months. It's a quarter of the year, but it's not the traditional calendar quarter. So that's why you want to have month to month. All of my clients already have it right now. And if my clients have it, you should have it. So I'm going to have another video for small business owners. It's similar. Small business owners are most likely going to have the financials, but for you as a self-employed, have those bank statements, get them ready. Don't wait. Don't wait. Get the Schedule C and have the bank statements. Don't be in a position like it was with PPP1 where you're not in line first. Because if you need this, you need to make sure that you're getting it. And how do you make sure that you're getting it? By being prepared. Now, I should have mentioned this at the beginning. I'm so glad that you made it to here. But as a CPA and with what I did with PPP1, jjthecpahelp.com is a community service website I created. I don't sell anything on it. I do have a business website, jjthecpa.com, where you can hire me for a consultation and blah, blah, blah. I'm not promoting that website to you. What I'm telling you is jjthecpahelp.com you want to have as a resource because as PPP is rolling out, I'm going to have links on there, spreadsheets, worksheets, forms, etc., to help you, not for sale, okay? Just to help, no booby traps. And you're going to want to turn on the notifications to JJ the CPA, me, this YouTube channel, so that when things come down the pike, you're getting notification of it, and then you're being able to be aware of what it is that applies to you. All right, hey, so. Do me a favor, especially if you made it to here, I sure have provided some little value. So click it, subscribe, put the notifications on, and then don't you ever forget, you've never met a CPA quite like me.